Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other side of the country by Jones Laughlin, who is in lovely North Carolina. How are you doing, Jones? I'm doing well, and and thank you for making me envy where you are because I was there a couple of weeks ago, and like, oh, I was reminded of just what a beautiful part of the world you live in. Yeah, and uh, uh, and this year we've had uh, really bad weather, and nobody is sympathetic. I found uh... <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, and Jones, you've made it your life work to deliver powerful ideas and practical solutions to individuals and organizations struggling with too much to do. Your books are described as illuminating. Your presentations unforgettable. And in thirty-two years as a teacher and professional speaker, you've helped countless people make better choices with their. Th- time so they can thrive. You've worked with FedEx, Walmart, Choice Hotels, Toyota, Bridgestone, uh, and many others, US military included. And as well as a successful speaker, you're a co-author and author of four books, including Always Growing, Juggling Elephants and Getting to It. And you've also worked as a senior trainer on the best-selling book, book Who Moved My Cheese. And what we're going to talk about today is finding a refreshing perspective on time management, productivity, and decision making. So, Jones, let me kick it off this way, right? Um, and I'm, I'm sorry if, if people are listening, I, I'm repeating myself, but today people tell me all the time, right? Oh, I'm busier than I've ever been in my whole life, right? Especially at work, it's oh, busier than I've ever been. And I always kind of counter that with are you actually busier or are you more distracted than you've ever been in your life? Because let's face it, like back in the day, I mean, I lived in pre-internet days, my first jobs. I mean, you had, to be honest, I mean, yeah, sure, you could be lazy if you wanted to be and you could think, but you had to actively work to find <laughs> to find distractions. <laughs> yes. And you had to and you had to be surreptitious. Now they're just everywhere. You know, you got this thing, you've got everything popping around. So so with that as a with with that as a starting point. Um, how, how much do you think the distraction of the world we live in today with all the instant access to everything and our, and our craving for con- constant dopamine hits, how much is that impacting our ability to manage time? Well, I think it's I think it's incredibly impactful on, on how we manage our time, because, as you said, it's so easy not to be focused. It's it's easier not to be because you've got electronic distractions. You've got just uh, overwhelming workloads sometimes. And in fact, I normally put it into three buckets that, um, you know, keep us from being able to be as productive as we want. And and that first one is internal. You know, there's so much that we, we want to get done or we don't mm-hmm. have clarity about uh, our goals or our expectations, you know, that we have on our team. The second one is, is external. The one you just talked about is, is it's it's the technology, it's the environment we're in, it's what's going on around us. And then the third is expectations of others. Uh, so often I hear people who say they're really busy and when I try to get help them to get clarity on well, what's expected of you to get done, they're like, well, you know, I think it's this, and I think it's that. And I'm like, well, no wonder you can't get the right <laughs> things done. You don't have a clear path on what you're supposed to be working on in the first place. <laughs> and, and let's face it, Jones, I mean, we live in a we, we live in a, a business culture, certainly in the States, and I believe it's, it's pretty much it it has spread to europe as well where we we celebrate busy right i mean the busier you are the more busy you look the longer hours you work the more stressed out you are somehow that's actually indicating that you're you're doing a great job you're more committed than the other guy who's more relaxed and gets his job done and then goes home yeah yeah it's 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 kind of like we you know talk about sometimes about we're managing by hours and not outcomes we mm-hmm. we don't start by saying well, what do i want to accomplish today it's just oh, wow i was just like you said i was so busy all day and and many times i say yeah and you went home and went oh i just don't feel like i accomplished anything mm-hmm. of value because again we haven't taken the time to ask ourselves what is it that I want to accomplish today? What's in align with my professional goals, my personal goals, and then invest the time to figure out, well, where can I get that done today? Now, some people are going to say, Jones, I don't have any discretionary time to figure that out. Well, then I think that's another conversation you know, <laughs> uh, to have. Um, but yeah, I think we, we do. We, we, we elevate busy as like, okay, as long as you're active, you're getting done. But activity does not equal accomplishment, as you know. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Any any hamster will tell you that <laughs> <laughs> as they spin around in their wheels. Uh, but the, the thing that you mentioned there uh, just a moment ago, I wanted to come back to because I think it's an incredibly important point, is that we often don't ask what the expectations are, what is expected of us to deliver, what time frames. It's almost like we're afraid to ask. We just assume it's, it, you know, you ask like, well, when do you need this? Yesterday. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. And we don't manage those expectations. Mm -hmm. um, a great book by uh, uh, William Urry, Power of a Positive No. Um, when I'm working with my clients sometimes, when they're talking about trying to manage expectations of others, uh, he has a great model in that book, and it's called Yes with a Period. Ex yes with an exclamation point, No with a period, and Yes with a question mark. So let's just take a common example that someone might say to one of us. They say, hey, have you got a minute? And then you're in you know, our response. Oh, well, you know, I guess I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But I don't, what do I say? And then that's yes. With an exclamation point is the first thing you do is say, here's what I'm currently working on. You know, I, this is what this is the deadline I'm trying to meet. But you you advocate for yourself, yeah. which leads to the no with a period, which is now logical. So, you know, I'm trying to get this this report out. So, no, I don't have a minute. And then, yes, with a question mark is, hey, could we talk later today? Mm -hmm. Could we talk this afternoon? Uh, it's a real simple framework for people to use to get that clarity they need and to protect that time they need in case they want to work on something that requires a deeper level of focus. Yeah. And and let's face it, I mean, we fooled ourselves that multitasking is is a real thing and that you can be, <laughs> uh, whereas I call it multitasking is doing lots of things badly or mediocrely or whatever, <laughs> if that's such a word. But we've convinced ourselves. But in your your example there, right, for me, if I go, yes, because I feel like, oh, yeah, I want, I want to help, you know, Jones or whatever. Um, they say on average, it takes you like 20 minutes to a 30 minutes to actually refocus on what you were focusing at. So the minute I give you just actually cost me 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, well said is that, you know, getting back to that level of focus we had before is so difficult um, when we stop. And, and that's why I'm a fan of, you can call it time blocking, time batching, whatever you want. Uh, Pomodoro technique, you know, the 25 minutes and the five mm -hmm. minute break, but really getting serious about setting some, some dedicated time to work on something, whether that's to process email or to plan or to be creative. Uh, we have to have that time. That start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. I mean, David Allen and getting things done reminded us that's not working. That's quick mm -hmm. switching, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And, and I think the other phenomenon now that uh, is even more prevalent is obviously since a lot of people are working from home and working virtually is that is the temptation that and I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. So the temptation of, you know, you pass by your your home office door, you pass by your computer and you think, oh, I'll just I'll just spend another few minutes. And before you know you're you're taking away from other things you're taking away from the rest of your life but you're invest you're it's almost like you've got this magnetic attraction to this and that and that kind of wipes everything else out yeah yeah it does and that's why boundaries are so important right you, we have to set those boundaries that that this is this is my work time and it may not be that it's um yeah. you know nine to five or eight to five which nobody works that anymore but it may be that hey you know what i'm going to work a while in the morning if i'm working remotely and then i'm going to step away i'm going to tell my team you know i'm going to educate mm -hmm. my team that this is what i might step away and go exercise or go take care of something personal then i'm going to log back in or work and i may i may do that off and on a few times during the day and actually actually have my last segment from, let's say, 8 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. um, but the key there is, you know, taking the time to invest not only in, in work, but also in yourself. So, you know, those people who work remotely and who are good at it, I have found, you know, they set those boundaries that this is my time here, this is my time there. Because if not, then like you said, it becomes a never ending uh, drive. Just, I'll just work a little bit more. Well, I'll just step back in there. And, mm -hmm. and then an hour later, they raise their head and go, oh, what? The family's gone to bed. <laughs> <laughs> or the family's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, too long. And yes, you're exactly right, John. Uh, and, and, I think, I, I, and I think what this means is that in many ways is that, it, you know, managers, executives, all the people running businesses, you have to, you, we have to start looking at things differently because the world has changed. And like you said, we need to be able to, within reason, accommodate different styles of working, different, different uh, routines, etc. 
as long as there's as long as and, and it goes back to what you mentioned earlier as long as there's a discussion about expectations and and there's a trust there um but i think we have to be more flexible because otherwise people just vote with their feet they go okay well if you want me to be very rigid here i'll, I'll just go get a remote job with somebody else that is more flexible yeah. Or I will do what, you know, we heard about, you know, a year or two years ago, and we're not seeing as much of it now, but it's, but it's the quiet quitting. It's okay. Yep. I'll just, I'll just put in a minimum amount of effort um, until you discover that, that that's what I'm doing. And, you know, then I, but by, by then I will have had the time to go look for another job or, you know, I've got our department or a team so far behind because I really haven't given my best effort uh, and been creative and engaged to, to help move things forward. And isn't that an interesting point, though, the, the quiet quitting? Because let's face it, I wonder how many people have quiet quit without their bosses ever noticing. Because, as you said, there's there's no real set expectation of resource management or output or deliverables or timeline or anything like that, that we 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 believe we have all of those, but we don't really manage them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We And, you know, I think that goes back to the individual asking themselves, you know, Am I engaged? Am I wanting to fully contribute um, at work? And if that motivation is not there, I think it's it's asking yourself, why isn't it there? Is it really because the my boss, my supervisor, my manager hasn't given me clear expectations, or is it because I'm I'm afraid to ask, or uh, I'm not I don't I'm not enjoying the work I'm doing, or I'm not finding it fulfilling, or in some cases, do I just not, you know, am I not clear on myself about what the next three to five years or next year of my, you know, career looks like? And am I doing the things today that are going to build the foundation for me to move up to the next level in the organization? Or if I do go somewhere else to be able to take that next step uh, in my career, I think there's going to be all kinds of things that might be causing that person not to be you know, fully engaged with mm -hmm. their work. And the other thing is, is this whole idea of managing priorities. And I think this is something that a lot, a lot of people struggle with. Um, a lot of people have like, everything's a priority. And therefore, as you know, if everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority. But it's that idea of actually being able to prioritize and being able to negotiate, you know, the priorities or being able to understand. Um, because otherwise, then again, you're back to you're prioritizing everything. Therefore, you're not really making anything a priority so you're not really delivering anything particularly well yes and i think the question that i often encourage my coaching clients to ask is if i say yes to this if i make this a priority what do you want me to say no to mm -hmm. what do you want me to make a lower priority i want to be focused on what you see or what you believe or what you're telling me is most important i'm simply saying that if i make that a priority I'm going to need to shift some other things to deliver on that. And that, mm -hmm. to me, that comes at it from a position of strength, not of, oh, I can't get it all done. Because we know what happens then. Um, they they don't make anything a priority. They don't meet their deadlines or they turn out mediocre work. And then the their supervisor goes, oh, yeah, you couldn't get it all done, could, could you? <laughs> um, and so I think it's really important. Like you said, you gotta you got to have those conversations about, you know, what are the expectations? What are the priorities? And and be real with them about mm -hmm. what's possible. Yeah, because uh, because one of the things that's common, um, and, and you've been through this many times, you know, you do like annual brainstorming or you set up for next year uh, and people and you go, OK, you know, what are some of the things we should do? And everybody's like, oh, we should do this. We should do that. And you write them all up on the whiteboard. and You're going, yeah, yeah, this is fantastic. And then you say, OK, well, well what should we stop doing? <laughs> and then there's crickets, right? And there's crickets. And if go, the question's even asked. If the question's you know, even asked. But yeah, it's, asked, it's not even asked. There's, there's crickets. Uh, so yeah. I, how do you help people with that? Because I always feel like that is one of the hardest things, like you said, the ability to say no and to say, okay, if this is now a priority, we're going to stop doing this or we're going to de-emphasize it, but we're going to do it intentionally. Yeah. I think one of the first things you have to do is you got to go back to, what are your goals? What are your outcomes? What are you working toward? Because I think you got to pressure test the these new ideas to say, you know, what are the ideas or the things that if we focused on, what are going to be the things that are going to you know move us most confidently in the direction of accomplishing our goals? And I think once you've done that and, and prioritized, well, I think this will, I think this will. Okay, great. Uh, you know, and then you got to ask yourself, what are the resources? You talked about resource management. Mm -hmm. What are the resources that are going to be necessary to make? A, B, and C happen. 
hmm, okay, if that's the resource it's going to take, where are we going to get them? Mm-hmm. And again, you'll get crickets for a while, but then people will eventually start speaking up and saying, well, you know, we're finishing up on this project. So maybe in a couple of weeks we could shift some of our attention, you know, to a, you know, at that point, or, you know what, we thought this was a priority, but after this meeting, I'm just not sensing that that's going to move us forward as quickly as doing, you know, B. And, mm-hmm. and so, you know, how can we, like you said, de-emphasize or spend less time on that and, and not say no to it, but just not right now. Yeah, uh, type yeah. of thing. Um, and really, thing, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I said, and the other thing was that we have to uh, allow allow people, as a, as we discussed earlier, to come forward and talk about things. So, one of the things I did yeah many years ago, when I was running some companies, is I tried to get our strategic plan and that on one page, right, mm-hmm. and, and everything on it, and I, and I had these one pagers, right, and I and back in the day, I laminated them and gave them, <laughs> sent them, had them sent to every single person in the organizations both regardless of whether they're in the office at home. And I said, stick that in your workspace so you can see it every day. And I, then I said, now I'm going to ask you a favor. Anytime you're doing a task or doing something and you look at that one pager, if you can't, if you can't connect what you're doing to what's on there, I want you to ask your, talk to your manager. Because the other thing we're really bad at is like we just continue doing stuff and we don't question why. And sometimes, we're, you know, maybe 20% of your work is obsolete. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I love your example there of having that as your your guidepost, your north star, whatever you want to call it. Um, people should be able to to answer that, and um, if they can't, then there is a problem. And and I love that proactive approach that you took that that helps them govern themselves. Mm-hmm. Because you know, too often they may be waiting for uh, someone else to say, "Hey, maybe you should shift here or there." But if they've got that as their guide then certainly that's a way to help them self-govern and make sure they're focused on, on the right task. Yeah. And, and one of the other things I did, I, I did many years ago at the University of Michigan, I did a, a lean office uh, mm. course uh, for a week or two up there. And one of the fascinating things of that is how, how common sense a lot of this is. Uh, I mean, especially back when we were just talking about like organizing an office, but you know, you would see people and they're going back and forth to the printer room, going back and forth to the printer room, like all day long. And then you realize there's a group over here who use the printer 90% of the time, yet they're the furthest away from the printer, right? <laughs> so how, how is that? Why don't we move the printer next to them or move them next to the printer? Now you've just saved a load of time, but it's just sensible things like this. And I think we can apply a lot of that, you know, common sense to our lives if, 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 we're, if we're willing to actually take a look at what we're doing and how we organize ourselves. Oh, so true. Especially as it relate, you talk about the office environment, whether mm-hmm. that office is remote or in person. I love doing a, a focus audit with, with people sometimes. And I say, right. okay, sit in your workspace, wherever you're going to work. And I said, now tell me, what do you see going on around you? What do you see, visually see that can be distracting to you? And they'll list things. And then I'll say, what do you hear? right now that could be distracting you. And somebody might say, well, I hear somebody walking their dog. Maybe they're in an apartment. I hear somebody walking their dog outside or I hear, okay, well, um, you know, what do you smell? You know, that that's kind of distracting. Well, you know, somebody's cooking this or, you know, this doesn't smell real good down here or whatever it is. And, you know, I can go and we can do tests. Uh, we can do touching as well because we can talk about your office equipment, those things. I'm like, how in the world do you expect to focus when you've got all those things working against you? Yeah. And, and, and like you said, there's so many simple things we can do to create that environment where more of the right things are likely to get done. Sometimes it's as simple as turning your desk a different direction or, or, you know, brightening up the room or something that's going to encourage you to focus instead of encourage you to be distracted. Yeah, no, I think that's a really, I, I think that's a really, really important point there that you made because I don't think uh, people take a lot of that into account, particularly if they're setting up, you know, home offices or whatever. They just think, oh well, I've got a space here, I'll use it. But to your point, like if your space is beside the kitchen, is that probably the best thing? You just said about smell. Smell is actually a much more powerful, uh, powerful than sound and vision. You, yep. I mean, smell actually can take you further away and prompt memories from way back. <laughs> so, so these things are incredibly important. Yes. Oh, it's so true. I mean, one of the things that I do when I want to focus, uh, John, I, I have a diffuser in my office mm. and my favorite combination is white tea and thyme. Uh, because that combination, for some reason, just really sharpens my focus. Now, I've heard other people say, you know, peppermint does it for them or lemongrass or something. But, I mean, I'm a big proponent of that mm-hmm. because if the smell 
helps me, because we do know that's the strongest uh, emotional connection we have to something, then I'm going to use it yeah. uh, to help mm -hmm. me focus. Do they have a whiskey one flavor? <laughs> well, then, then I start hearing the the the, the Alan Jackson song. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, but I, I love I love that actually what you just said there about the diffuser. I mean, it's a simple thing, but it is it is it, it's intentional, right? Because you're exactly. setting up your space intentionally to optimize it. And I think, unfortunately, not a lot of people, um, probably not a lot people even think about doing that, optimizing right. their workspace. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, and it just takes such a small amount of time to do, um, even if you just do one thing. If that helps you get that 1% better, then it's worth the time you invested to do it. Absolutely. Well, listen, Jones, this has been fantastic. All of Jones's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure, absolutely. Um, of course, I make my living as a keynote speaker and uh, coach, and I also, uh, you heard, authored a few books. Uh, but the biggest focus of my work is the idea of helping people make the best choices with their time, and that comes through the keynotes and the coaching and the writing that I do. Um, would love folks to reach out and connect with me at jonesoffin.com. Also, I put out a lot of content on LinkedIn. Uh, mm -hmm. I find there's a lot of busy people on there looking for <laughs> tips and ideas. So um, I would love for your audience to uh, go over to LinkedIn and just type in Jones Laughlin and, and uh, connect with me at my profile there. Yeah, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that uh, as, a, as to, to use an old hackneyed expression, you know, time is the one thing you can't make more of. So <laughs> you need to, you know, manage what you have as it's a precious commodity. Um, so listen, thanks again, Jones. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.